January 8, 1900, Volume 3. The errors contained in these writings, which will do good. Firmness and Stability in Operating I was thinking to myself, who knows how much nonsense, how many errors are contained in these things I write. At that moment, I felt I was losing consciousness, and blessed Jesus came to me and said, My daughter errors too will do good, and this in order to make known that there is no artifice on your part, and that you are not some doctor, because if you were so, you yourself would realize where you were mistaken. This will also make shine more that it is I who speak to you, by looking at it in a simple way. However, I assure you that they will find not a shadow of vice, or anything which is not virtue, because while you write, I myself guide your hand. At the most, they may find a few errors at first sight, but if they look at them thoroughly, they will find the truth. Having said this, he disappeared. But after a few hours, he came back. I was feeling all hesitant and concerned about the words he had spoken to me, and he added, My heritage is firmness and stability. I am not subject to any change, and the more the soul draws near me and advances on the path of virtues, the firmer and more stable she feels in operating good. And the farther she remains from me, the more she will be subject to changing and oscillating, now toward good, now toward evil. January 8th, 1909, Volume 8, The Fruit and the Purpose of Communion. Having received communion, at the best moment I was thinking of how I could cling to blessed Jesus more than ever, and he said to me, in order to cling more tightly to me, to the point of dissolving your being in mine, just as I transfuse mine into yours, you must take what is mine in everything, and in everything leave what is yours, in such a way that if you always think of things which are holy and regard only what is good, and the honor and glory of God, you leave your mind and take the divine. If you speak, if you operate good, and only out of love for God, you leave your mouth and your hands, and you take my mouth and my hands. If you walk along holy and upright paths, you will walk with my own feet. If your heart loves me alone, you will leave your heart and will take mine, and will love me with my own love, and so with all the rest. So you will be enveloped with all my things and I with all of yours. Can there be a tighter union than this? If the soul reaches the point of no longer recognizing herself, but the divine being within her, these are the fruits of good communions, and this is the divine purpose in wanting to communicate himself to souls. But how frustrated my love remains, and how few are the fruits that souls gather from this sacrament, to the point that the majority of them remains indifferent, and even nauseated by this divine food. January 8th, 1910 or 11, Volume 10, The Family Kills the Priest. Self-interest is the woodworm of the priest. I will now write things of the past in order to obey, and I will explain myself about these reunions of priests that blessed Jesus wants. Since a holy priest came during last November and told me to ask Jesus what he wanted from him, 
my always lovable Jesus told me, the mission of the priest chosen by me will be high and sublime. It is about saving the most noble, the most sacred part, which are the priests, who in these times have become the laughing stock of the peoples. The most appropriate means would be to form these houses of reunion for priests, so as to segregate them from their families, because the family kills the priest, while he should promote it, push it, and also intimidate it. If these are saved, the peoples are saved. Then I received four communications from Jesus regarding these reunions. I wrote them, and I gave them to that priest, so I did not think it was necessary to repeat them in these writings of mine. But obedience wants me to write them, and I will make the sacrifice. Number one, my adorable Jesus told me, the mission I will give is high and sublime, in a special way for priests. Faith is almost extinguished among the peoples. And if there is any spark left, it is as though hidden under ashes. The life of priests, which is almost completely secularized, and may be worse than that, as well as their examples, which are not good, lend a hand to extinguish this spark. And what will happen to them and to the peoples? This is why I have called him so that he may interest himself with my cause, and with example, with words, with works and with sacrifice, he may put a mend in it. The most suitable, appropriate, and effective mending would be to form houses of reunion for diocesan priests within their towns, segregating them from their families, because the family kills the priest and causes the darkness of interest the darkness of appreciation of mundane things, the darkness of corruption, to be cast into the midst of the peoples. In sum, it takes away all the prestige, the splendor of the priestly dignity, and it makes him become the laughing stock of the people. I will give him intrepidity, courage, and grace if he gets down to work. In addition to this, it seemed that blessed Jesus adorned his heart, now with love and now with sorrow, letting him share in his pains. Number two, my highest and only good continues to speak to me about the great good that will come to the church by forming these houses of reunion. The good will become more good. Those who are imperfect, lukewarm, relaxed, will become good. Those who are really wicked will go out. And this is how the body of the ministers of my church will be riddled and purified. And by means of the purification of the chosen part, the most sacred, the people will be reformed. In the meantime, I could see before my mind, as if inside a picture, Corato and the priests who were to lead this work, though it would be directed by Father G., the priests seemed to be Father C, D, B, and D, C, F, followed by others. And it seemed that they were to put in a share of their possessions. And my adorable Jesus added, It is necessary to weave these things well, so that no one may escape, and to procure the necessary means so as not to burden the people. And so the parish incomes should be tied only to those who will participate in these reunions. And these will maintain the choir and all of the other offices pertaining to their ministry. At first, this will provoke contradictions and persecutions, but mainly among the priests themselves. However, soon things will change. The people will be with them, generously providing for them, and they will enjoy the peace and the fruit of their toils, because for those who are with me, I allow that everyone be with them. 
Then my always lovable Jesus threw himself into my arms, all afflicted and supplicating, so much as to move to pity even the stones. And he said, Tell Father G that I beg him, I supplicate him to help, to save my children and not to let them perish. Number three, my always lovable Jesus continues on the same topic. With the fathers there present, I saw the heavens opened and my adorable Jesus and the celestial mama coming toward me, with the saints looking at us from heaven. And my benign Jesus said, My daughter, tell Father G that I absolutely want this work. They already begin to raise difficulties, but tell him that it takes nothing but intrepidity, courage, and lack of self-interest. It is necessary to close one's ears to all that is human and to open them to that which is divine. Otherwise, the human difficulties will become a net that will keep them entangled in such a way that they will not be able to get out, and I will justly chastise them, rendering them the rags of the people's but if they promise to get down to work, I will be all for them, and they will be nothing but the shadows which will follow the work so yearned for by me. Not only this, but they will have another great good. In fact, the church needs to be purged and washed by the shedding of blood, because she has dirtied herself very, very much to the point of giving me nausea. But in the places where they will purify themselves in this way, I will spare the blood. What more do they want? Then turning around as though looking at one of the priests, he added, I choose you as the head of this work, because I have cast a seed of courage within you. This is a gift, and I do not want you to keep it uselessly. Up until now you have wasted it in frivolous things, in foolish things, and in politics, and these have repaid you by embittering you and by giving you no peace. Now enough, enough, give yourself to my work. Use the courage I have given you only for me, and I will be all for you, and will repay you by giving you peace and grace. I will make you acquire that esteem which you have been fishing for back there, and which you have not obtained. Or rather, I will not give you human esteem, but divine. Then he said to Father G, My son, courage, defend my cause, sustain, help those priests whom you see a little disposed for this work, Promise every good in my name to those who will commit themselves, and threaten those who cause contradictions and obstacles. Tell the bishops and the leaders that if they want to save the flock, this is the only means. It is up to them to save the shepherds, and up to the shepherds to save the flock. And if the bishops do not place the shepherds in safety, how can the flock ever be saved? Number four, having heard about the difficulties of the priests in forming the houses of reunions, I was praying to good Jesus that, if it was his will that it be done, he would dissolve the obstacles which were preventing such a great good. And my adorable Jesus, in coming, told me, My daughter, all the obstacles come from the fact that each one looks at this thing according to his own conditions and dispositions and naturally they encounter a thousand laces and stumbling blocks which prevent their steps. But if they looked at this work according to my honor and glory, and only for the good of their souls and of the souls of others, all laces would be broken and the obstacles would vanish. Yet if they commit themselves, I will be with them, and I will protect them so much that if any priest will try to oppose and hinder my work, I am even disposed to take his life away. Then all afflicted, my always lovable Jesus added, Ah, my daughter, 
Do you know what the most insurmountable stumbling block and the strongest lace is? It is mere self-interest. Self-interest is the woodworm of the priest, which renders him like rotten wood that is fit only for burning in hell. Interest makes the priest the laughing stock of the devil, the mockery of the people, and the idol of their families. Therefore the devil will put many obstacles to hinder their work, because he sees that the net in which he has kept them chained and enslaved to his dominion is being broken. So tell Father G to infuse courage in those whom he sees disposed, and not to leave them until he sees that the work has started. Otherwise they will just keep planning, but will not conclude anything. Let him tell the bishops not to accept new ordinations, if they are not disposed to live segregated from their families. Tell him also that many will deride him, make fun of him, and discredit him. But he should not pay attention to this. Suffering because of me will be all sweet for him. January 8th, 1919, Volume 12. The Divine Volition has the power to render infinite all that enters into the Divine Will. Continuing in my usual state, I was all afflicted, deprived of my sweet Jesus. But all of a sudden he came, though tired and distressed, almost searching for a refuge inside my heart to extract himself from the grave offenses which he received. Heaving a sigh, he told me, My daughter, hide me. Don't you see how they persecute me? Alas, they want to put me out, or give me the last place. Let me pour myself out. It has been many days since I spoke to you about the destiny of the world and the chastisements which they pull from me with their evils. This pain is all concentrated in my heart. I want to tell you about it to make you take part in it, so we will share the destiny of creatures in order to pray, suffer, and cry together for their good. Ah, oh, my daughter, there will be fights among them. Death will claim many lives, including priests. Oh, how many masks, dressed as priests, I want to remove them before the rising of the persecution against my church and of revolutions. Who knows if they might convert at the moment of death? Otherwise, if I leave them there, during the persecution, these masks will remove their mask, will unite with sectarians, will be the fiercest enemies of the church, and their salvation will be more difficult. All afflicted, I said, Ah, oh, my Jesus, what pain it is to hear you speak about these blessed chastisements. And the peoples? How will they do without priests? They are already few enough, and you want to take away more of them? Who will administer the sacraments? Who will teach your laws? And Jesus, my daughter, do not afflict yourself too much. The scarce number is nothing. I will give to one the grace and the strength that I give to ten, to twenty, and one will be worth ten or twenty of them. I can compensate for everything. And then the many priests, who are not good, are the poison of the peoples. Instead of good, they do evil. So I will do nothing other than remove the prime elements who poison the peoples. Jesus disappeared, and I remained with a nail inside my heart because of what he had told me. And almost restless, thinking about the pains of my sweet Jesus and the destiny of the poor creatures. Then Jesus came back and, surrounding my neck with his arm, added, My beloved, courage, enter into me. Come and swim in the immense sea of my volition, of my love. Hide yourself inside the uncreated will and love of your Creator. 
My volition has the power to render infinite all that enters into my will, and to raise and transform the acts of the creatures into eternal acts. In fact, all that enters into my will acquires eternity, infinity, immensity, losing all that has a beginning, that which is finite, little. All that my will is, so it renders their acts. Therefore, say, shout loudly in my will, I love you. I will hear the note of my eternal love. I will feel the created love hidden inside the uncreated love. And I will feel myself being loved by the creature with an eternal, infinite, immense love, a love worthy of me, which stands in for me and which can compensate me for the love of all. I remained surprised and enchanted, and I said, Jesus, what are you saying? And he, my dear, do not be surprised. Everything is eternal in me. Nothing has a beginning, nor will it have an end. You yourself and all creatures were eternal in my mind. The love with which I formed creation, which was unleashed from me and which endowed every heart, was eternal. What is the wonder, then, if the creature, leaving her own will, enters into mine, and uniting herself to the love which longed for her and loved her from eternity, and binding herself with that eternal love from which she came, performs her acts, loves me, and acquires eternal, infinite, immense value and power. Oh, how little it is known about my will. This is why it is not loved nor appreciated, and because of this the creature is content with remaining down below, operating as if she did not have an eternal origin, but a temporary one. I myself don't know whether I am speaking nonsense. My lovable Jesus casts such light into my mind about his most holy will, that I am not only unable to contain it, but I lack the right words to express myself. So while my mind was wandering within this light, blessed Jesus gave me a simile, telling me, In order to let you understand better what I told you, imagine a sun. This sun spreads many little lights, diffusing them over the whole creation, giving them full freedom to live, either spread through the creation or inside the sun itself, from which they came out. Isn't it right that the little lights which live in the sun, their acts, their love, acquire the heat, the love, the power, and the immensity of the sun itself? After all, they used to be within the sun. They are part of the sun. They live at the expense of the sun and live the same life of the sun. By no means do they increase or reduce this sun, because what is immense is not subject to grow or to decrease. The sun only receives the glory, the honor, that these tiny little lights return to it, making a life in common with it. This is all the accomplishment and satisfaction of the sun. I am the sun. The little lights which come from the sun are the creatures. The lights which live inside the sun are the souls who live in my will. Have you understood now? I believe so. But who can say what I comprehended? I would have wanted to remain silent, but the fiat of Jesus did not want it. So I kissed his fiat and I wrote in his will, May he be always blessed. End of January 8th Fiat <laughs>